So hi, Woman Good Noise Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm Glory. And we're here with I'm Ben. I'm Alex and we play in Acres. There were some questions to say about the upcoming album, Burning Throne. So congrats on that, by the way. How do you feel about the response to the announcement so far? Yeah, it's been great. It feels uh awesome to kind of finally be back after having like a short period of time off. So yeah, it's great just to get new songs out, have a new record coming out, which is tomorrow. So yeah, it feels good. Hell yeah. Album rocks. Oh, yes. Thank you. Of course. Yes. Uh, so is there any meaning behind this album title or cover art? Uh, the the kind of title sums up kind of what the record's about. We, uh, Me and Alex wrote a lot of this during the pandemic. And just as like the pandemic hit, we, had, we were just, we were kind of like midway through a touring cycle of our first record. Um, mm-hmm. So then the kind of burning throne was was kind of us explaining our frustrations of kind of working. You obviously put so much time into a record and and into recording it. And then the touring cycle is kind of almost some members, like the favorite part of the album. So to have it kind of taken away when we were only halfway there was, was kind of what, where that title came from. And when we wrote it, there was a lot of frustrations and, and things like that. So that's pretty much where, where it was at. Makes sense. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about your writing process for this album? Um, yeah, so it, most of it was me just throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticked for like the first four months. Um, just because I hadn't, I haven't written a record or even a song for acres, like fully by myself for like six years, I want to say. Jeez. Yeah. So um yeah, obviously the pressure of the whole writing process being on my back was probably a lot to do with like the sound change. Like it's a little bit heavier, it's a little bit like gnarlier. And um yeah, I think it I think it was just down to like Ben said, like the frustrations of being forced into solitude. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, I think um yeah it was it was tough it was it was really hard at first but once we landed on the kind of vibe that we wanted it was it was relatively quick just because i ben wanted the second album from lonely world to be a little bit poppier uh not as heavy less screaming and i wasn't having any of that <laughs> fair enough i was yeah i just i i i prefer heavy music and um that's that and i i've wanted acres to get heavier for a long time but um obviously when ben first started he came from like a uh like a what would you even call it like power pop <laughs> like pop rock <laughs> <laughs> it, it almost like pop rock it, i used to be in like uh, like a you me at 60 type you know like those kind of bands mm-hmm. something like that so uh yeah, when Alex says that I didn't want to didn't want to take the album heavier, um, for me coming out of Lonely World, it was very. Oh, I think the direction we should go is poppier because this seemed this was poppier than the last stuff, so this seems to be kind of working. And uh, but I'm glad we we kind of didn't go that way, and we kind of have started taking the band where we've taken it. Fair enough, um, Alex. It sounded like w- was this mostly you, or was there some sort of collaboration like? during the writing process um it was a bit of both like i brought a lot of the ideas to the table and then um me and ben would just write over zoom so it's really funny that we've been doing loads of stuff over zoom recently because and i'm talking about the record because it's kind of like it's, it's just bringing back a lot of memories of me sat here in this in the exact room and you can see there's guitar cases and guitars everywhere yeah that this is where i've been for like the last <laughs> two years yeah <laughs> oh yeah um yes and then and then we talk about the writing process and it was just this half of the screen you know me and ben just talking to each other and me <laughs> me with a guitar playing riffs and ben being like that sucks that's cool <laughs> yeah and yeah it's just, it's just funny it's just yeah was- but yeah so a lot of it was me sending like 30 second clips to all the boys just being like is this good <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah, it was a lot of that at first, and then and then once we got into the swing of things, it would be like 
Ben would be like, I want to write this kind of song. And then I'd sit here and we'd just like jam riffs and stuff. And it, it just flowed really well towards the end. But the initial writing, like starting the writing, writing process was awful for me, especially because mm. it just felt like so much pressure that I wasn't used to. Mm-hmm. And um, we were quite lucky that we had the whole of the pandemic to write because the pressure <laughs> eased up after a while. Do you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. obviously when you're, you can't even go to work you can't even go out and you know that there's something you should be doing and you don't feel like you're doing the right thing at the time it was I was stuck in a bit of like a rut for for a while Mm -hmm. just because I was just like nothing I'm doing is good enough like I don't think I'm going to be able to write this record but then obviously with a lot of trial and error we, we got the record and we're all really proud of it awesome As you should be. um and then like in terms of your zoom writing sessions with with ben was there like some sort of disconnect for you guys at the beginning like trying to figure out the zoom writing not not really because we're from like completely different parts of the uk like i live right on the south coast and ben's over on the like as far west as you can go pretty much mm. so we're used to like being apart and stuff but and then um obviously the writing process for lonely world was quite similar but it wasn't as interactive do you know what i mean like no one was sitting on a zoom call or whatever it was just demos being sent and then ben singing on them and sending them to everyone and then everyone was like yeah this is cool this isn't do you know what i mean but when it was like i i think it was easier doing it face to face because the camera doesn't lie do you know what i mean if ben was like yeah this is sick and i was like you don't like it (laughs) i mean so it was it was it was fun to like see see the reactions and it was like we're in the same room and I think uh the pandemic made FaceTiming and Zoom calling and everything like so normal. Like I was playing board games with my family <laughs> over Zoom and stuff. Aww. And my mum literally lives like I could walk to her house in like five minutes, but I wasn't allowed to see her. So mm-hmm. we were playing board games. My mum now like I don't think I FaceTime my mum for the whole time. The, the iPhone has been out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And now yeah. that's all she does. She just faced it. I'm, all, I'm like, Mom, I'm walking home. Like, stop talking to me. I'm going to walk <laughs> into the <laughs> Just call yeah. me. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it, it, it just became really normal after a while. Yeah. Okay, that's good. And then you also mentioned uh, at the beginning of the writing process, you kind of had some pressure on yourself. Was the pressure because of the like immense amount of time that you had because of the pandemic and you said you kind of felt that you had to use that time properly or was it because you were following up your uh, debut album both like completely it was it was like the days I didn't write I felt like a piece of shit you know what I mean? <laughs> just that play like dark souls just being like I hate myself Excellent. And then the, when I was writing and it wasn't going to plan, I also hated it. Do you know what I mean? So there was a lot of like, yeah, there was a lot of, uh, I don't want to say angst, what's the word? Um, frustration. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of frustration towards the beginning because, um, yeah, like Ben wasn't really vibing what I was putting forward at first because obviously it was a lot heavier and a lot darker and mm-hmm. um, it wasn't where... Ben saw the record going and it wasn't necessarily where I saw it going it was just what I was writing at the time and then um yeah I think I think there's like a happy medium do you know what I mean like it is a lot darker and it is a lot heavier in some parts but other parts are maybe a little bit more melodic than the last record and a little bit more like minimal like um if you guys have heard the record like uh visual hallucinations doesn't sound like anything it has ever done and it's literally two guitar parts and yeah it was yeah it, it was fun at first i hated it and then towards the end i loved it oh yeah good love that uh, so what song off this album took the longest to write and which one is your personal favorite i think i would say either burning throne or nothing took the longest for me to get done mm-hmm. i remember nothing was done like finished <laughs> vocals whilst we were in the studio probably the day i had to it was probably one of the last songs we tracked and i think it was the we we kind of set a day aside just to track that and then we had like figuring out courses and things like that so i think i was pretty kind of stuck on nothing for a while um 
and then weirdly it became that's probably my favorite song from the record as well that was uh probably one of the songs that i i remember me and alex kind of writing from scratch over zoom with mm. with kind of no demos there it was a case of cool like let's start a song like this and then it that's what became nothing which is cool so it's probably my favorite one. Oh yeah i think i don't know what took the longest because maybe burning thrones took the longest because it's changed a lot of times like um me and Ben aren't the most, uh, how would you put it, musically intelligent. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I, know nothing, I know nothing about music theory. I taught myself how to play guitar. So, like, someone's like, oh, I play an F. And I'm like, have you got talent? Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot well, of people don't believe riff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like 1418 something. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was it because. Uh, we wrote when we wrote burning throne like the actual song came out quite quickly and then what ben did over the chorus apparently i don't know <laughs> flash there was loads of flashing notes so i remember in the studio we had to rewrite most of the leads and i think it took me like two days just to get the leads down oh, wow. so yeah the actual the actual like main song was done fairly quickly but because me and ben are idiots it took quite a good than expected <laughs> Yeah, the hard thing is, is like you can you can tell this with clashing, but because like Alex said, like I'm a self-taught singer and I don't play any instruments, so me trying to say, oh, this this note's clashing, and then it's just kind of like, well, is it? And I'm like, I don't know, is it? And then <laughs> and then me trying to get across, like, well, maybe this guitar needs need, needs to change, and Alex saying, kind of saying, what well, to what? And I'm like. Well, I can't play the guitar to show you. So to like, I'll be on here now. He's just like, oh, okay, sick. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was, there was so much of that. And yeah, um, it's, even like, even writing melodies, I have to either like whistle it to Ben or play it on guitar because I'm just, I can't like tell him. It's really funny. So yeah, I think, I think we, our writing process will probably make a lot of bands squirm because it's a lot of like ad lib and whistling and humming. I'd love to be a fly on the wall just to hear you guys go like, oh, no, 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 it should be <laughs> <"Bow>, <laughs> no. speaking your own language. Yeah. yeah, we'll do we'll do this again next time we write a song over Perfect. Zoom. And you can sit <laughs> but yeah, it was just yeah. I think where none of us really know what we're doing. <laughs> it's it, it's a really funny process, and obviously, we're lucky that our producer is very clever and has a lot of knowledge of musical theory as he should, because he makes records. It'd be weird if he didn't. Yeah, so he was super strange. helpful. Yeah, exactly. He was super helpful and he was telling me things that didn't make any sense. And I was just like, I'll just change it. How about that? We'll just change it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just tell so, me which one sounds right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, that was like, that was one of the scariest things for me though, because obviously in Lonely World, um, our old guitarist, Theo, was kind of a main, almost like a main writer for that. And, and Theo is one of those dudes that knows music theory to the ground he can play any instrument and he's just talented at kind of like guitar drums he can sing he can play the fucking flute anything like that so so he was kind of doing everything for the first record all the strings all the all the simps orchestral everything he exactly how he wanted it so then i don't even know where to start with that shit so just (laughs) having demos do you know and i think that was daunting for me because I got so used to hearing the demos kind of with all the strings and stuff. And then me and Alex are like, well, we can't do that. So what the fuck do we do? We're just going to have to guess and hope it's cool. <laughs> so it's very much that. It was a lot of that. Yeah. I remember like, even for some of the demos now, like I've tried to put strings on it and it's just fucking terrible. <laughs> Next record. Next yeah. Yeah, so you guys will get it at some point. Um, exactly. And Alex, your personal favorite off the album. My personal favorite. Probably nothing. I think I think it's such a departure from what we've done before and playing it live is so fun like it's so easy for me because there's like one lead part and I love the easy life. Oh yeah, <laughs> love that. Perfect. Um so how did the track list for the album come about? Did you guys write the opener be the opener, close be a closer, did you shuffle around and see what fits? What was that process like? I just leave it to Ben every time. <laughs> I just don't care. <laughs> I was like Ben Ben will Ben will normally, like set lists, Ben normally comes up with like 
like track list ben ben normally has like a good say in it i think we i swapped like two or three songs like most of it was just what ben originally put forward mm -hmm. and i think i won it the only thing i changed was like i think um visual hallucinations went into another soft song and i was like nah it needs to it needs to come back with a riff or something and that was that was it and then it was done <laughs> fair enough yeah i think when burning from is written for me instantly i was just like yo that we should open an album with that because that's cool and then we knew like lost in our own world was kind of purposely written to end the album so we knew we knew we needed like a nicer track i i'm sure not every band does this but for me i've always liked kind of ending on a bigger emotional song especially for a record because personally i love that and and when you you hear those songs on albums when you're driving you know where they they're big songs that kind of slowly die out and then they just keep going on. I can't mm -hmm. name an example, but they just, they kind of fade out for about two minutes and you're kind of in a trance of it. That's how I wanted to close the album. So something like that with just ringing out was super nice. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so would you be able to tell us where your headspace is at while you're creating and writing this album? Yeah, I'd, just a lot of frustration. <clears throat> like obviously, like Ben said at the beginning, um, having to cut our whole touring cycle short when we when we felt that we were just starting to gain some traction and do some cool stuff. Yeah. And then not knowing when the pandemic was going to be over and when we could play shows again, we, mm -hmm. we all felt like it didn't make sense to write for nothing. Ob obviously, a lot of bands did, and it, and it did them really well because obviously it forced their fans and, their, and the listeners to absorb the record how it should be. Do you know what I mean? Like... You, you just you just sit and listen to it and you get to know it and obviously when shows come back around everyone's familiar with your new material but we we didn't really want to do that because we just saw it as an opportunity to like regroup obviously Ben mentioned uh we had some member changes like uh, Theo our old guitarist who was the main mm -hmm. songwriter left and there was a little bit of uncertainty around that and then I think we just had that conversation where it's just like right we could either stop being in a band or we could start a new band or we can just see where this whole writing process takes us so mm -hmm. it was like there was part like towards the beginning of the pandemic I, I kind of felt like if I don't if I don't get this right then it might be the end of the band do you know what I mean oh. mm -hmm. yeah so there yeah so there was a lot of pressure and a lot of frustration and then um what I think once me and Ben started vibing, it, it started to make sense to write more and to do a record. So yeah, it was it was a roller coaster, like the whole thing. But it's that yeah, it started off with a lot of frustration, a lot of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't say resentment, but it was I think Burning Throne, like the whole concept of the record just sums up the writing process as well. Ben, are you are you in agreement? with that like was that where your head was at too yeah kind of the same to start with it was very like we it the album was written kind of over the two lockdown periods there was two and i remember well that the first lockdown was kind of very frustration you didn't know what was going to happen and it was kind of it was at the same time exciting to be able to spend that much time writing and not kind of everybody at their job so that was there and then it was some frustration and then i remember the the kind of second half i fell into that kind of depression stage that a lot of people went through during lockdown which just came from absolutely nowhere so there's a few songs on there like stuff like the death of me things like that which kind of they were written in that kind of time where i was going through that um and then kind of coming out was was when we started actually recording it in the studio so Makes sense. All right. Um, so how do you recommend your fans to listen to this album for the first time? Should they do it in the car with friends and dark with headphones on? Is the workout album, party album? What do you personally recommend? In the dark with headphones on for sure. Okay. That's yeah, I, I like to listen to records like that. Like that's my favorite thing to do, really. When when I'm really excited for like a, an album to drop, I'll make time to just fully absorb it and just take it all in and um yeah, just just listen to it how the artist wants you to hear it as a record. So I think most of like I think Acres is one of those bands where it 
every record is like I don't it sounds cliche but like a journey that we want you to go on rather than hitting playlists and fucking singles and blah blah rah rah it was really hard to choose singles for this one because I think to us every single one had potential do you know what I mean so we just chose like the ones that were the most contra- like the most contrasting is that right but then even outside of that showing friends and showing family and people actually listen to the record trying to choose the singles there were there were singles I had in my head singles Alex had in his head obviously but then someone else would come across and be like well I think it's the flame should be a single and I was just like Really? Okay. And then someone else would say it, and I was just like, oh, maybe we need to put into Flames as singles. A few people have said they really like it. So it was, that yeah. bit was well out on it. Proper. And I'm the worst at choosing singles, so I kind of let fate oh. take its course. <laughs> Nothing's worse than when your label's like, this one, I'm like, fuck that song. <laughs> like, That's actually I didn't even want that on the, so- on the album. <laughs> Absolutely. That's what happened with his sickness, wasn't it? Everyone was like, yeah, oh. sickness in health should be a single. And I was just like, no. No, it yeah. shouldn't. <laughs> and then it did really well. So I was like, I'm just going to shut my mouth from now on. I'm off of singles because <laughs> clearly I don't know. Uh, so this one should be super, super quick off the top of your heads. I want you guys to describe this album for new listeners in three words. Three words each, six total, no more, no less. Who's going first? I'll go first. It's uh, atmospheric, mm-hmm. heavy, and dark. Mm-hmm. Nice. Perfect. Come on, Alex. You just used all the ones I was going to use. That's why you should always go first with a question like <laughs> this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Valuable life lessons. Like I'm, trying, I'm just, I'm, I'm just like entering my inner thesaurus and trying to think of the exact same words as them. <laughs> Ethereal. <laughs> I don't fucking know. I think, I think it's yeah, heavier, darker, cooler. Okay, Perfect. sounds good. Um, so in that same train of thought, is there a certain feeling or emotion you want listeners to have while going through the album? I guess I guess music is subjective, do you know what I mean? But I think the purpose of this record is to... I think if fans or listeners don't understand, like... Obviously, if you've read about the record, we've said we've been talking about the same things, like, as we've been talking about in this interview, like, the frustration and mm-hmm. and, like the solitude and i think i want i want that to be prominent and i want people to feel that do you know what i mean like because it is it is a completely different record to our last and it's it's supposed to be for like it's all intentional and it's um yeah i just i just want them to hear acres at their most frustrated so far do you know what i mean Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for me, like, I would almost like people to hear it like the first time I, I heard Acres. Obviously, I joined the band late and kind of the first time listening to them fully, the the cool, the kind of the sounds and the, something I've always loved of what Alex has done is the guitar tones, the reverbs, the sounds. And, and when you listen to that in headphones, it's awesome. So I kind of like people to listen to it and hear it like the first time I heard Acres just just absorbing it and, and taking it in because it's, it sounds nice. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so what is your favorite memory that you made while creating this album? Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> Ben was really ill during the whole recording process. No! <laughs> and it was my, it was the most pathetic thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Man, come on! The dude just wore a hoodie and ate berries and just laid in bed for hours. And oh. we, me and oh. me and the producer, would be sat recording guitars and we'd go grab lunch because we stayed at the studio and we had like a little like apartment. <clears thing. throat> and every time Simon would just be like, "I bet Ben's in that stinking hoodie, just feeling sorry for himself." <laughs> And we'd go up and he'd just be in his in his little bed, just being all pale. <laughs> just... oh. <laughs> and Ben is maybe the world's biggest McDonald's fan. And uh, we, we thought we'd treat ourselves and go get ourselves a McDonald's breakfast. <laughs> and even Ben turned it down. And when we came back, he was just like, I should have fucking got one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's uh, normally like being the studio is like my favourite part of any recording 
process, like being there and getting involved with everything. So to be ill during like the whole thing fucking sucked. And then we had to, obviously the, the instruments were all done in December and then it kind of had to wait till like April or something like that, March, April before the vocals got done. So, but the the memories, like the main memories I have are just kind of zoom writing. And, and I, and I kind of like that because if I'm, like me and Alex are doing it right. Like we've been doing it the last couple of nights and Alex knows if we're writing and kind of, I'm involved in any of the process then I'm all in. And it's kind of something I don't switch off over. I'll be oh. in bed and I'll be thinking about the song and I'll be messaging at like 1am and I'll wake up and I'll be thinking about the song and straight into like my office to start demoing until it's done and I'm happy with it. So it was probably the, that excitement of co- when we really got in the flow of it of being able to kind of just do it at home as well which was nice because this was the first time i've been able to record at my house because of lockdown i had to teach myself to do it so i found it really exciting to be able to have that and be able to just come down in the morning and have a coffee and then just start kind of writing and start trying to demo and, and put together ideas so that was probably my favorite memory oh yeah that's awesome it's amazing yours is way nicer than mine yeah i was gonna say yeah <laughs> dude i i liked this there's there's moments from the studio that i love but this it remind that just reminds me of being fucking ill yeah. and that yeah. sucks but then there's times where i remember you went out on the piss with simon and he came back all drunk and was hugging me and stuff like that and bird once <laughs> yeah. so there was some good parts but a lot of it like if i think there's always something kind of an album cycle that you you think back to the first kind of thing and that is one of them is just being ill at the ranch and just <laughs> sucking and everyone else having a great time and me just being like oh yeah we didn't care no one <laughs> no <laughs> because like yeah it was just funny because obviously we were there for like um 10 days straight and we had to record all of the music so i did i, I think i did all the guitars and the bass by myself in like a week and uh <laughs> Any time I was just like, where the fuck is Ben? And then we'd go upstairs and he'd just be in bed, just like pale. Oh my <laughs> like, go God. home. Why are you still here? But he just didn't leave. Yeah. Poor oh. Ben. But, it was but really I good. wanted to I wanted to be there. It's like you you spend a bunch of time writing it that to not see it come together. So even if you're ill, there was a bed there. So I'm just like, fuck it, I'll stay and pop in every now and then just to say this is cool or this is shit <laughs> yeah, exactly. um so picture this you're on tour you're at a gas station for a rest stop what is your snack of choice uh kinder, and, and, bueno. kinder bueno and a red bull that's that's mine that's my guilty pleasures okay mine's normally like a hot dog and a pack of mulber or something like that <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, a gas station hot dog yeah but well it depends where we are because if we're, if we're in europe then i really struggle so like gas stations if we go to europe there's really nothing where i'm like oh i'd love that it's <laughs> it's like it. it's ready salted crisps and twixes and that's probably your main option so it's, a hot dog's nicer than that so it's probably just like a hot dog or something <laughs> fair enough okay you have your hot dog. All right. I'm not, I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to let you have your Maybe hot dog. Maybe they're better in Europe, Glory. We don't know. Maybe they are I mean, mystery meat. The ones in Poland are, are, are. The ones in Poland are amazing. When they're good, they're good. But I got I got food poisoning from like a gas station hot dog before. So. Exactly. It's like a still shit over there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's fun, though. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Will I be sick? Will I be fine? Yeah. We'll see in like, ten Yeah, hours. I'm never gonna have the best time or the worst time, and I'm willing to take that choice just to make tour a little bit more exciting. Nothing's oh. more exciting than being on an eight-hour drive and just shitting yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Bucking uh, in the back of the van. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. uh, so, on the topic of food, if the band was a dish, what dish would the band be, and why? Oh, don't ask Ben. <laughs> the man <laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> if we were a dish, what would we be? I reckon like a cheesecake or something. Because you've got like you've got like the soft, airy top. Mm-hmm. You've got a delicious topping. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you've got like the big chunky like biscuit base. Oh yeah, I reckon like yeah, something like that because yeah, I feel like we can be heavy, 
and so can cheesecakes. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Um, so for the last couple of questions, we're going to shift completely away from music and go straight to death row. Boom. So yeah. if you're on death row, what would your last meal be with a drink? <laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> oh my God. You got to get that sponsorship. Yeah. Sponsor me. Mine would be probably, a ja- I love Japanese food. Mm-hmm. So I'd probably have like, like a really good ramen and some like steamed buns, some sushi and a pint of Stella. Okay. That'd be mine. Nice. Ben, is the McDonald's Sprite overseas as crazy as the McDonald's Sprite here in the US? Because that shit's crazy. I, I always have Coke with it. Oh. <laughs> Wow. So I've got that no idea. Like a, sin, like a little bit. Like that feels strange. I do. I've never had Sprite from McDonald's. Have you not? No, I, mean, I, I dude. Either. I'm always like, I find it weird to have anything else like with McDonald's and like a Coke or something. You never get. They used, to, they used to do like still Fanta, and that was fire. Mm. It was the best because you could have it with breakfast, and it felt like you have an orange juice, or you could have it with your burger, and you wouldn't get full because it wasn't so like gassy. Yeah. I think but, the McDonald's in the US is way better than the one in the UK, though. Well, I think it's an ocean said they don't eat McDonald's in America and they only eat McDonald's in Europe for some scientific reason. <laughs> I don't know. But I, I've had McDonald's in both and I think it's, 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 it's the same everywhere you go. Yeah, they keep it consistent. Those quarter pounders were a bit better in the US. Okay. I think German McDonald's is the best. They used to do cheesy fries, and they were fucking Ooh, crazy. That sounds, yeah. good. <laughs> that sounds crazy. Sounds good. So, if you could live in one fictional world for a week, where would you live? The never-ending story. Oh, just imagine riding Falco. That would be fucking sick. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> I love, I love like eighties, like fantasy, like practical mm-hmm. effects kind of stuff. Like it's my favorite thing in the world. Like I watch, I watch the Labyrinth, I watch Nevering Story, I watch Legend like all the time, and I think it just looks like the coolest place ever. Mm-hmm. Like fuck Game of Thrones, <laughs> <laughs> that just looks like Scotland. I want to go to that. <laughs> it's just Scotland. Yeah, I want to go to wherever the Neverending Story. I can't even remember what where it's said, but yeah, there. All right. I'm going to say like Harry Potter world because I've been playing the game at the moment and that's where I want to go because it looks... It's literally <laughs> Scotland. <laughs> oh. <laughs> in Scotland and you... Well, I want to go to, I want to go to fucking Hogwarts. <laughs> there you go. What, uh, what Hogwarts house are you? Uh, Slytherin. Slytherin? Okay. Although I'm, I'm being a bit of a nerd of it and I'm trying to get the platinum on the PlayStation so you've got to be all four. So I'm raving at the moment until I get it. Right. That's a thing. Like, are you like switching houses, or is it just four different like? Yeah, games? so you have to get to like a certain point in the game with every house. So I've done the game with Slytherin, and now you've got to move on and do like four hours with every other house to get the trophies. <laughs> so I'm doing. Holy that. shit! Jeez, yeah, I sucks. wish you luck. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I have the honor of asking the last question. Every single person that we've spoken to have said that it is the most important question. What's your favorite color? Green. Purple. Nice. Ugh. Beautiful. Ugh, green. What do you have against purple? Hey. Purple's like, purple Dude, purple's and sick. Purple and orange is just a no-go for me. Ugh, Dude, I had an orange bedroom. Taste. They're probably my two favorites, yeah. orange and purple. Oh, yeah. Purple oh. and orange. <laughs> All right. Nah, green. Green for life. Dude, your hat's orange. <laughs> brown. That's brown. <laughs> Look, orangey. You're orange, bro. Yeah. <laughs> um so as i said that's all the questions you have to say is there anything that you guys would like to plug by the record please <laughs> or just stream it i don't care that's cool. it cool all right <laughs> um, yeah 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 poor. thanks for thanks to everyone for still listening and and continuing to listen to the new stuff uh we appreciate it Hell yeah. All right. Well, thank you for silence, guys. Ben and Alex from Acres, and we have been the Good Noise Podcast.